as we head across to the entrance now across the car park welcome to fort park resort august 2019 we haven't been to fort park resort since we came for bouncilla opening which was end of may end of may and we tend to avoid the park um, during that time because of the school group trips and it becomes very very busy and it becomes very very carnage quite honestly carnage but we're back it's summer holiday still we have little we have big Lin, and we are going to go and try and get on some roller coasters uh, we hear we hear that stealth is actually closed and it has been closed for a couple of days which was a bit of a surprise because it did go through a little bit of maintenance not that long ago however we also hear that quantum did open for a day i think the park actually said it opened for a day <laughs> and it's also closed but we're gonna go and check that out now then we are gonna have a look at the fright nights construction we've got some new mazes coming for 2019 if you're not interested in that the link will be in the description below it won't be in this one so if you are interested in that head to the link if you're not stick right here we're at fort park resort and it's time to get inside welcome to the island kurt what are you looking forward to today uh stealth but it's not here no well, it's here. It's Wait, definitely it's here. Open. I'd see it. I'd uh, see it over there. So Inferno. Oh, God. Swarm. Swarm and Inferno. So, Kurt's favourite coaster here is Nemesis Inferno. Um, you know, it's a lovely little ride, but I don't think it's anyone's favourite. It's smooth. Maybe. Leave your comments below. Horse. What is your favourite coaster here at Fort Park? Leave your comments below. For him, Nemesis Inferno. Oh. For him, Swarm. Both are open today, both are operational for me, stealth. Yeah, don't think there's any sign of life, but we will go around there and we will, of course, have a look, won't we? Yeah. We do like a bit of stealthage. We're going to sneak through the door here. I quite like this door. So we're going to start with some of the flat rides here. You've got Vortex, of course, you've got Zodiac. Oh, Quantum, yeah. Head over to Quantum, it's got a bit of scaffolding again. Oh. Opening obviously went really well. Just seeing Quantum there, it's not having the best of the years, is it? I think it's been open literally one day this year. Um, there is a gent working on it actually, he came over to have a look at us while we were kind of, you know, taking some shots of it and Kurt was moaning that it hasn't been open and it's disgraceful. He's definitely turned into a bit of a keyboard warrior today. Um, we've had a quick ride on Vortex. Love a bit of Vortex, been in the park since 2001. Um, you know, great afterburner, we love a good KMG ride. Whilst it's not the best we've been on, as you may well know, love a bit of Vortex. We've also been on Zodiac as well, that's running quite smoothly today. And we're gonna head round to Rush and see what the queue's like for Rush. You can see Bouncilla here. That's what we came for last time. Currently isn't open. That's a bit of a surprise. There is some really heavy weather due for this afternoon. Um, but this morning, it's actually quite nice, you know? They're out skiing. They're out skiing, Kurt. Yeah but no Bouncilla, so it's a bit of a surprise that that's not open, but we're gonna go and have a little quick look and just see what's going on. Uh, we were hoping because the morning areas for the families that we could get on it, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Uh, whether or not it opens for the adult session later, we'll have to wait and see, but two flat rides down. We're gonna head over to the coasters, see what the queue's like for there, and of course then uh, on the other link below for Fright Nights, we're gonna have a look at the Fright Nights construction. So we've got three new fears, Kurt. Did you know it's three new fears? Three new fears for 2019. Let's see what we can go and find.
pushing a gate, arsehole. That's you, Cody. How are you feeling about Colossus? Yeah. First coaster? Yeah. I think the first coaster we're going to hit today is going to be this beast. A 10 looping one. It's coming. Honestly, it's coming. It's coming, Cody. Yeah. Here it comes. Of course, we have another one of these opening next year, don't we? But we're going to talk about that later. We're going to get on it first. We're going to see how well it rises today. And then we're going to talk about the one opening next year at Flamingo Land. We found that twice, didn't we? So the clouds are coming in, look at that look. It's gonna rain. Yeah. It feels really hot and humid, but that cloud over there is nasty looking. So we definitely wanna hit these coasters and get on them before the rain comes, because uh, it's probably gonna stop them all, isn't it? Yeah. Colossus. Colossus. Right, well we haven't got very far, we've got Colossus done. And uh, yeah, actually that wasn't too bad, was it? No. That rode quite nicely. I'm going to have to get this um, speck of rain off of here, hang on. Sorry about that. So yeah, the, the cloud's beating us. The angry cloud over there is now coming down and it is starting to rain. So Colossus, the uh, world's first 10 looping roller coaster, it was based on a uh, eight looping design. A few modifications, a few tweaks to the lift hill was actually brought down to fit the 100 foot height restriction of Fort Park. And of course, we have a new one opening next year, or a new version of one opening next year. We put various surveys out, we put various questions out about the new one that's gonna be opening, which Flamingo Land have purchased. And it's not new, but it is sort of new. So the ride itself was uh, bought, I think, by Hopi Hari in uh, Brazil, at the same place that Thunder Luca went to from Alton Towers. And it was never built. For whatever reason, it was never built. I think then it's come over to Europe where it's gone somewhere else and it was never built. And now Flamingo Land have picked it up. We've heard a really, really good price, a really, really good price. And it's gonna be built for the first time at Flamingo Land Resort in Yorkshire, UK next year. And we're really looking forward to it. We're really looking forward to it. Now, when Colossus opened, it was one of my favorite roller coasters. Many of you may know initially it was planned to go to Chesington World of Adventures and it never got there because of various restrictions. Then of course the fire here which destroyed Wicked Witch's Horn and a bit of the Magic Mill. Decisions were made to close those one year after the other and this became the Thrill Park of choice. And of course Colossus was born in 2002 with Nemesis Inferno in 2003. Now the difference is, is there's various versions of this around the world and the one that Flamingo Land are getting as far as I'm aware it's slightly modified, very slightly modified, particularly in the drop. So the drop is actually 107 foot, but this one's 100 foot. And it's got a slightly modified um, kind of, uh, just a drop, I'm sure it's just a drop that's slightly modified, but of course it has the modified trains as well with just the lap bar style restraints on it. Now I actually said um, when they announced it that I think it will ride different to Colossus. I think it'll be a completely different ride. Really smooth. And people were like, ah, oh, it's the no same way. ride, it's the same ride, it's the same ride. Now then, we have actually got a few feature videos coming up on uh, coaster creds and things like that, which do touch on clones, which touch on boomerangs, which touch on um, SLC, something like Infusion as well, because uh, that's cloned all around the world. And I have to say, for me personally, I find they ride really differently. I get they're the same ride and I get they're the same design, but I always find that, you know, maintenance of the trains, particular oils used, you know, whatever it will be, that they ride differently. And of course, I'm expecting a massive 10 looping roller coaster like this to ride differently at Flamingo Land. I'm particularly expecting it to ride differently, bearing in mind that it's a reprofiled lift hill and drop area. 
and it's actually going to be slightly bigger and it's going to have completely different trains uh, in the design and lap bar. Um, as far as I'm aware, they can't use the uh, lap bars on here because of clearance and, and something else. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I'm pretty sure where this is kind of like the original model of this type, they can't do it. I could be wrong. Leave your comments below if you know differently, but Fort Park have opted not to do that. However, you know, if Flamingo's Lands comes in and it's a really, really cracking coaster, like this used to be when it opened in 2002, then they might have to make a change on it because this, this isn't the greatest coaster anymore. Now it did rattle a bit, had a bit of rattle, didn't it? Uh, yeah, on the inversions especially. Bit of rattle on the inversions, a little bit of rattle on the inversions, but I have to say it's not as uncomfortable as what I've experienced on other times. Then we were sort of mid-train, we weren't front, we weren't back, I know the back's the worst. There's quite a lot of vibrations to it. Now I know some of these older coasters are kind of used to that, so again, I don't expect the Flamingo Land 1 to ride the same, I really don't. I'm expecting much, much better things from the clone much much better things and i personally cannot wait we will be going back to flamingo land next year and we will be going to ride it we always say you know we've got to have a reason to go back there well that is the reason to go back there without doubt a reason to go back there now of course many of you may not know that when this opened it didn't have these restraints it had a very standard over the shoulder restraint it didn't have the annoying bits that come around the side and it was a really comfortable ride it's really comfortable to sit on but because of an incident and people being able to get their legs up, why you do that when you're on a roller coaster is completely beyond me. They had to add the new restraints. First, they added the uh, metal bars down the side while they redesigned the restraints, presumably with Intamin. And then the restraints were added, and they've got that horrible bit that glips, grips, uh, grips, clips, grips. It goes into your leg either way, grips into your leg, and it's horrible. It is utterly, utterly horrible. And if you've got anything in your pockets, it digs in, it gets tighter as it goes around. I don't like it at all. So again, the Flamingo Land one will eliminate that. Hopefully, fingers crossed, will eliminate that. And again, give it a different and possibly better ride experience. So it will be interesting to see. Yep. Do you think it'll be different? Yeah, I think it'll be smoother. Because the track hasn't been worn, yeah. the train hasn't been worn. And of course, it's uh, quite well known that Colossus is sinking a bit because of where it's built and it pops a few bolts and things. So that's quite well known. Um, so yeah. We're looking forward to it, but let us know below. Are you looking forward to Flamingo Land 1? Will it get you to the park? Have you been to the park before? Is it something you'll be looking forward to and rushing for in 2020? You know, we have a couple of big roller coasters opening next year with that. And of course, Tornado Springs um, at Portland's Park as well with their spinning coaster. So really, really looking forward to it. But Colossus, good ride. Yeah, it was decent. Good ride. And we're gonna head over to Saw now. So we've literally decided first to do the two roller coasters that usually give me a headache. That one hasn't given me a headache. We'll Saw. Will Saw give me a headache? Sorry. Let's go find out. Face your fears. Saw the ride? Yeah. It's time for Saw the ride. So of course, our biggest gripe about Saw the ride is always this drop at the bottom and it's this bit here and you can see as well you can see the wear marks where they change you know obviously there's no reason for the wear marks on the side to train change unless the track bit changes and you can hear the thump when it hits it and that is the most uncomfortable part of this ride and if it wasn't for that i'd like this ride it's short it's snappy it's to the point it's quite intense the brakes aren't too intrusive but it's this bit it's clearly the jolt at the bottom. Now, you do feel it more sometimes than others. Uh, people say it's per seat, but I, I don't even think I can mirror it down per seat or even per train. I think sometimes it's just luck, maybe weight distribution on the car itself. You can definitely hear it when it goes over. I really wish that was just very slightly realigned. Um, it wasn't a bad ride. No. Not bad. No. That's all right. No, Kurt found the uh, final inversion, the piece over there, uh, which you can't see here, the most uncomfortable. I don't mind that, it used to obviously break as it went through the final brake run before the drop and round, it used to break and slow the train down, but it no longer does that. It's pretty much a free flowing through the brakes and then throws you around that final one back into the corner. And yeah, it is quite rattly. It is definitely quite rattly. Um, with these girths, I think a lot of them are quite rattly. We haven't been on too many, but you know, we've seen people on them and the general consensus is generally they're quite rattly. And uh, yeah, it's a bit of a shame. Just a minor tweak, it's all it needs. I love the theme, I love the Saw theme. I was a massive fan of the films, even the more recent ones. I just find them quite so clever. I get the gore, they probably don't need to be as gory, but I find them really, really clever. And you know, Saw's got some amazing hidden elements inside. 
from the drop, you know, if you've never been on it, you get the drop, and you turn around, and you've got the inline twist as well. I'm sure most people have been on this by now. It's 10 years old this year. And then, of course, a vertical lift hill. You know, when we were down the fair the other day and we were going on the toboggan ride, you know, people were standing in the queue line for the toboggan ride. This is, you know, a, a portable roller coaster that goes on the back of a trailer, but it's got a vertical lift hill and everyone, all the uh, teenagers in the queue were very much like, yes, yeah, just like Saw, it's just like Saw. That is how recognizable this ride is. Bearing in mind, we also have speed and we have an inversion, uh, like, and in kind of a, an upright vertical lift hill on the Smiler, as well as Rage as well. This is the one this is the one that people know. It's always like, it's like sore, it's like sore. Of course, once the steepest roller coaster in the world, beaten by Mumbo Jumbo at Flamingo Land, it's a cracking little ride. As I said, short, snappy, really intense layout. I can understand why it's popular. I just wish, just wish they'd sort that out. Now we kind of decided we don't want to do Samurai, do we? We don't want to do Samurai. We've been on uh, two extreme already this year, plus other ones. I can't bring myself to go on the poor girl. I've done a lot of work recently on a Chesington history, which will be coming to the channel really, really soon. And of course, you know, when watching my on-ride video I took of the uh, of Samurai at Chesington, you know, even when it does a windmill program like that, it just isn't quick enough, which is a real, real shame. Um, and you know, knowing what it rode like at Chesington is just disappointing how it is at Fort Park. But from Saw the Ride, we're gonna head down now, have a little look around um, Old Town. If you wanna see the footage from Fright Nights, as I said, link in the description. And then we've got more coasters to ride. Nemesis Inferno and Swarm are definitely open. We wanna check out stuff. We don't really know what's going on. A few people have said on our Facebook page it's been shut for six days, which I actually didn't realize. So we're gonna have a look, see if there's sign of life. Yeah, we've got some rides to do before the rain comes down. Yeah. Before the rain. It's only spitting in. Poor old slammer. Only one in the world. Well, at least we can still view it, to be fair. Of course, you can see Fright Nights is being advertised all around the town. Uh, old town for that. Established 2015. By literally slapping a label on a derelict area of the park. But, that said, that said, Inferno. I think it's Inferno time. So it's your favourite coaster at the park, Kurt? Yeah. <laughs> Talk to me about that. How? Because well, it's Ow. smooth, but it's still got force. Has and it? The roar it makes is good as well. It's it's like a lovely sound. I'll give you that. It does make a lovely sound. You know, a good BNM roar. And uh, it never says Inferno does have to. Well, I don't know, Kurt. What is not to like about it? It's not exactly small. Well, it's yeah. Just smaller. They do ones. call it the baby coaster. I will hand you that. But it's just That's because it's the smallest one, apart from. I don't know if we include Walking Dead and Flying Fish in it. And it's a good ride. I have to say, I do enjoy it. I do enjoy it. But, uh, favourite? Yeah. Here? Yeah. Oh, each to their own. Here's the Jungle Escape. We've still yet to do this this year. We do actually have a free pass to come and do it, but we haven't actually got around to doing it yet. It is on our to-do list this year, Jungle Escape. You weren't too keen on it, were you? He wasn't too keen on it. We've got him today. You don't mind, do you? No. So it's, it's pretty much, it is 10. It's pretty much an escape room. So, um, you go in, there's a few tasks and things to do, and you get you work your way through. Uh, it uses a lot of the old I'm a celebrity theming, and it takes about 25 minutes apparently to get through, which is a decent length. It's only seven pounds at the moment, but um, we won't be doing it today because of you. We're trying to get him to go on the ghost train, but it doesn't open until 12 o'clock, and we'll have to see how busy it gets because I hear it gets ridiculously busy. But Kurt, your favourite coast this one? Nemesis Inferno. Yep. Nemesis Inferno. Enjoy Nemesis Inferno. Yeah, it was good. Good. <laughs> Did you enjoy Nemesis Inferno? Was it your favourite? No. Was it your favourite so far? Yeah. Oh, okay, fair enough. Um, it probably was my favourite so far as well because I'm not a massive, massive fan of the way Colossus rides all saw. But uh, here's uh, Rumble Rapids. Oh yeah, Rumble Rapids. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with Rumble Rapids, of course, as we said through the close season updates. Uh, you got the lovely new bars there. You've got that wonderful gent up there who 
that's nothing. That's nothing. That simply terrible. does nothing. And there's two chairs there as well, because uh, just as we approached, there were two people standing there, sitting there doing nothing. Uh, with your feet up, yeah, just chilling out, just chilling out. Now we're going to get on it now and we'll, uh, we'll head back off and we'll see how it's riding. And um, yeah, I, I don't see long left for this ride. I certainly don't see long left for it, but we'll see, we'll see. Let's get on Rumba Rapids. Yeah. Nice family attraction for the family. Some contagious music around here in Amity Cove uh, as we come away from the Rumba Rapids. And look, we did this to Cheson. Just look how wet I am. Yeah, I'm not at all wet. I'm not at all wet. And that's because the Rumba Rapids now, I don't think it is a water ride, is it? It's just like a carousel on water. You might still class that as a water ride, to be fair. Now then, I, we think it's going a bit slower and it sounds really, really stupid. I'm actually gonna sit on this bench for this. It feels like it's going slower. Oh. Rumba Rapids, what do you think? A lot slower. Now the reason why we say this is there are two particularly sharp corners on that. Um, as you come out the first bit and you, you kind of dive down the hill, there is a sharp corner around to the right. And usually it's running at such a speed in the kind of flow of the water that you just zip around the inside. But we smack the backside and it's, I don't think that's ever happened before. And from that point I said to Kurt, I said, this is running a little bit slow. It just felt really sluggish, not a lot happened. Um, you know, we hit some of the wave bits and it wasn't even a little splash coming over the side of the boat. Uh, and then of course we headed for the tunnel and Kurt said, oh, the, the boat in front's just hit the waterfall. And I went, I've never seen the boat hit the waterfall. No matter how many people in it, I've been riding this ride for years, I've never seen a boat hit the waterfall. Again, it gives you the illusion you're going to and you just zip around the inside. And lo and behold, we plowed straight through to the waterfall with just three of us in it. And I got slightly wet down my, I got slightly wet back to be fair, uh, cause we bounced off it quite quickly. And I've never seen that before, which means the flow of water is naturally slower cause it's not taking around um, it's just not taking you around. You know, there are two people sitting at the end, there's someone sitting by the photo booth, there's about five people on the platform. It's such a labor intensive ride now. I can't see much hope for it going forward. I really can't. It looks derelict inside, doesn't it? It just looks awful. It smells awful where it comes from the river because most, most parks now don't use obviously river water. I just can't see it. I can't see it. I genuinely can't see that ride hanging around. Now, as you well know, usually at the end of the summer holidays, uh, possibly first, maybe second week in September, it shuts for the year. Um, you know, the university kids are still here. Actually, it's quite busy at the beginning of September. The university kids come in before um, they go off to university. So it's usually quite busy until the end of September. So that might stay open until then, but then it will close. It will close for the rest of the year. And uh, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced it's gonna reopen again next year. Don't really see the need of it, but I think it will. I don't know, even as a family attraction, it's not very good to be fair. It doesn't matter how many licks of paint they put on it, it still peels off the bright green. But we'll see, we'll see. It's not riding particularly well, it feels a lot slower. Yeah, disappointing. Disappointing ride, it seems a lot, a lot to maintain, a lot of people kind of on it, um, potentially that could be used for something else. But that's Rumba Rapids out of the way. Yep. So, we'll get up now and we're gonna walk over to Stealth. The whole area, as we could see, is completely blocked off. No sign of life. We can also see in the station just over there, there's no trains either. There's not a single train on the track, which also doesn't bode well. Now I know it's having a chain, uh, sorry, chain, the cable relaunch uh, replaced not that long ago, but as far as I'm aware, that went smoothly, but I'm guessing maybe it didn't. Um, there's no one working on it. There's no one around here. It's just this poor guy telling people that it's closed. But it's proper closed. It's proper boarded off, it's proper fenced off. Do not pass go, do not collect 200 pounds. So no stealth for us today. So we're gonna head into Angry Birds Land now. We wanna do dodgems, we love a good dodgems. Slash we love a dodgems. And then we're gonna head down uh, to the entrance of the park. We can't really go on Walking Dead. You're not feeling Walking Dead. And there are only three of us and it's a bit of a pain, obviously, because of the Vekoma train designs without the little bumps in the middle, that you can't do single rider on it. So we're probably gonna give that a miss. But yeah, no stealth today. Onto the Dodgems. Heading into the dockyard, which I like to call Abandoned Town. Uh, we have Darren Brown's ghost train. You're still not really feeling that, are you? He still doesn't want to go on it, bless him. I don't think he quite realizes that if he just closes his eyes, that really nothing really happens in there. But 40 minute queue, it's just opened. It's just opened 40 minute queue. I can't justify it. I was really impressed with this ride when it opened, but just not now. You know, the amount of money they've plowed into this thing. Again, it's another one I'm not overly convinced we'll be here very much longer, but we'll sum of that up at the end. 
But Rise of the Demons is open, it only opens from 12 o'clock now until park close. It takes a lot of time to get it ready in the mornings and still most, most posts we see on the Fort Park pages say that the headsets and audio and various things still don't work on it. But the ghost train, we're giving a miss today as to are we a walking dead? No walking dead either? No. You think it'll have a massive queue? Yeah. The last few times we've been actually, walking dead hasn't had a long queue, but um, you know, when you've got to have an even number of people and there's only three of you, it's not good, is it? No, not really. It's not good. But we're going to walk down and have a look. It feels a bit empty around here, doesn't it? it feels like there's a lot of wasted space. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. I mean, ten minutes. Could we get on there? Could we get on there with a? Could we just leave Kurt to fend for himself? Looking at me really strangely here. Let's have a quick look. I don't be scared. Oh, I don't want to be chased out by actors again. Yeah. You don't want to be chased out by a person. Yeah. A real life person. Yeah. I'm not a human person, not the sort of person who just sits straight or anything. Yeah. I'll tell you what, considering all the scare mazes I go in and Kurt now goes in, he's a real baby, Cody. I think that's slightly longer oh. than 10 minutes to be on with you, honestly. That's much longer than 10 minutes. And there are actors today, Cod. There's not always actors, that's, that's, a, that's a brutal four, life. Four, four? Rubbish. Four. Rubbish. Three or four. I've been on, it was like I've been on press nights, there's only ever been three as a max. There's no way there were four. There was, there was about... Four. They doubled, did they? Or, doubled was, for you. There was two or three. Honestly, yeah. bless him. He's such a wussy. He's gonna get better though, aren't you? Yeah, you are. He's gonna get better. We're gonna coach him in. Uh, we're looking forward to Chesington this year because he's going to go in Curse of the Lot. Uh, sorry, he's going to go Spiders, the new one, and he's going to go in Creepy Caves Unearthed as well. And that's going to be his first real scare maze. And if you can do that, Cody, you can do anything. Creepy anything. Caves are scarier than some of these ones. Yeah, he can do anything. And of course, Kurt's been through that, and he's seen people coming out the other side crying as well. So, you know, when he's in tears on Fright Nights, so I feel that's a job done. That's a job done. He'll only do it once, and then he'll get used to it. Busy round there. 45 minutes for storm surge. I think we're going to get wet enough as it is with the rain coming over. I don't think we need to sit in a boat full of muddy water. Let's go have a little old tidal wave. isn't open today so it will be swarm that will be my favorite along with cody actually i know he prefers the swarm as well where kurt is very much a nemesis inferno guy and um, swarm i love swarm opened in 2012 though this was the last major roller coaster to come to the park and it wasn't received that well which is why the seats were faced backwards for a couple of years until the incident on smiler in which they were reversed around for evacuation purposes just in case you didn't know why they turned back but we're quite looking forward to this queue isn't massive let's get on the swarm Bouncilla is open. Are they coming? Are they staying? What are they doing? I think I'm just going to walk off without them actually because you know it feels like too much effort to wait for them. They've not noticing, so good luck to them. Are they going to see? Do I really have to call them? I mean, what is he even doing? rain quite badly now now funny enough all the work they've done on actually painting those a couple of seasons ago they haven't worn that badly at all kind of baffling why they haven't planned to paint the whole lot if indeed they are planning on keeping the ride uh a nice bnm nice bnm would be good here actually bnm flawless would be nice here but you can see where they've redone them all and it's actually held up really really well over the last couple of years they even they even labeled that one cup wow. yeah i know so it is busy, uh, the park is still busy, it is starting to really start to rain at 2 o'clock it is supposed to absolutely tip it down. 
I've never seen those numbers. Never noticed those numbers before, I think they're new. So we're gonna go and have a look at the wait times now. We'll share the wait times with you before deciding whether or not we want to do any more re rides. We're not really sure. We're not really sure. If the weather's gonna continue like this, we'll probably take what we've done now. Let's go have a look at the wait times. All right, so wait times. So we've got 10 minutes for Walking Dead, as we said earlier when we were around there, 40 minutes for Darren Brown's ghost train. Never really changes, sort of stays the same, to be honest. Twenty minutes for the swarm. I have to say we walked down there, it looked a lot longer than that. The back extension area is open, it looked a lot longer than 20 minutes. We queued. We queued about 25 for it, didn't we, earlier? So I think it's a bit longer than that. Whoa! Whoa, that's bright. They do have free sun cream dispensers. Stealth, Stealth Swarm, Colossus on the beach and in the, uh, the storm surge as well, at the start of the storm surge. Not necessary today because it is raining, but it's a great little touch. So of course there are water fountains as well, uh, located in Angry Birds Land by the swarm and indeed in first aid. So as we know, stealth is shut. There's no sign of life there. Tidal wave is only five minutes. Storm surge is 45 minutes. Uh, flying fish is 10 minutes. Actually got quite a long queue, the flying fish, when we walk past it. We've got depth charge at 15 minutes. Storm and teacup at 10. Believe it or not, the beach and the slides are open. Obviously, we're not going to show you that because there's uh, lots of families on the beach, but they are actually open. It's the first time I've seen the... There's people on the slides, even in the rain. There are people on the slides. Nemesis Inferno is 55 minutes. Rumble Rapids is actually closed since we went on it. And Mr. Monkey's Banana Ride is just five minutes. Five minutes, what are you thinking? No. 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 Absolute no. The Angry Birds is every hour from 12 o'clock, so that's in full motion. Detonator, 20 minutes. The Dodgems, 20 minutes. We got to Dodgems at a really good time, actually. We pretty much walked on. Um, and it wasn't full either, which is quite nice. We got a little bit, there's quite a lot of cars on that Dodgem. So we got quite, yeah, we did all right on that. We did all right on that. Jungle Escape, as we said, 25 minute experience is only seven pounds at the moment. So that started off at 10 pounds. We've heard it's not been probably as popular as they wanted it to be. It is an add on charge, but we hear it's really, really worth it. Colossus at 60 minutes, Rush at 35, which we can see here. Vortex at 10, Zodiac at five. And I have to say, I think Vortex has a longer queue in that because that has the extended, yeah, that has the extended one open as well. So that's the wait times here at Fort Park. I think that's all of them. Bottom is closed and Bouncer at five minutes, as we just seen there. Uh, Cody doesn't want to do Bouncer. Let me just get the water off. Sorry for that. It's the second time I had to do that. So it is now starting to rain quite badly. So I think we're going to head out of the park. We agreed. Yep. We agreed. So we're going to head out of the park now because it is the heavens. Heavens are about to open. We will get through the gate. I think we'll sum up. So, as we're out of Fort Park there, you just noticed um, the security is so busy playing bottle flip that uh, I can't pull it. they're not even searching the bag. Someone even opens their bag for them, they're like, nah, don't worry, go through. And we had that on the way out as well. Now, I don't mean to be rude. Uh, we know someone that recently has come here and been assaulted and the security didn't arrive for 40 minutes. And um, that's the behavior that's going on. So sorry, Fort Park, but there's no condoning that. You hire these people to do a job bottle flip not searching bags I'm afraid in this day and age um, especially given the reputation the park picks up sometimes during busy periods not particularly good that's it we like Fort Park we love Fort Park we love coming to Fort Park and um, you know one thing about Fort Park as we always said is you have to get here early you have to get here proper early get some wonderful views of the park from over here you know this is the park that people rock up to from nine o'clock in the morning uh, even though it doesn't open until 10 they tend to let you in about half nine and then you can get on the ride from 10 o'clock and it's worth it it's worth to get here early we did um, quite a lot of the coasters early on we did the flat rides obviously first and they're all walk on and then we've gone all the way around and come back and all of a sudden you've got our two hour queues for some of the big rides so it's definitely worth getting here early for Fort Park We've enjoyed the coasters. It's a real shame that Stealth is closed today. Not a lot we can do about it, but we got on the other ones. Had a good ride on Colossus. We had a good ride on Saw, which um, you know can be hit and miss. We had a great ride on Nemesis Inferno. We had an amazing ride on Swarm. Vortex. Rush. 
and indeed Zodiac as well. Good rides on those. We went on the Dodgems, we went on the Rapids. As I said, I can't really see the Rapids lasting much longer. I just, I don't see the relevance of them. But, you know, if you're coming down to the park, get on them quickly because they will definitely be closing early before the end of the season. No doubt about that. But what do we think, Port Park? Good. Yeah. So we come here early. Uh, we always come here early and we've come here a few times this year and we tend to always say boys always say to me why don't we go to Fort Park why don't we go to Fort Park and the issue is I think with Fort Park is that it is also in desperate need of some investment um, we, we say that Chesington don't get a lot of investment a lot of new rides but they don't get any here either they haven't had any new flat rides in a long time they've not had a new coaster Definitely. now in what six years seven years seven years now since their new coaster and you know it just feels like the parks are being neglected it really does and this is also the same as what we say about Alton Towers sometimes it just feels that the investment at the moment seems going to Lego land down the road and they can't cope with it they don't have enough staff to actually cope with it so it's a really strange situation I'm really hoping the buyout on these kind of changes the attitude towards uh, running them because we come here we get the coasters done we get the two flat rides done and there's really nothing to do you know a massive dark ride here would be great and I'm not going to include Darren Brown's ghost train in that that's another ride I don't feel has particularly long left uh, being honest I know it costs a lot of money but the money it costs to run the effort it goes to getting it open in the morning and again the staff and labor involved you know a decent dark ride a decent ghost train an actual actual ghost train um, you know would would still only require people to load and unload and then everything else is done and I'm pretty sure the money spent on animatronics would indeed pay back what they would normally pay staff to stand there or sit there and watch boats go around so two rides I think are in danger whether they're in danger yet, I don't know because obviously Old Town Old Town is derelict. All these people that were saying Project 2020, um, you know, they should really know how long it takes to, you know, if you follow theme parks and you want to be a geek on these things, you should know how long it takes to get planning permission in and start construction. Project 2020 was never a thing. You know, there's never going to be ripping out Logger's Leap and getting a roller coaster in there for 2020. Will they do it in 2021? I'm not convinced they will. We've got Project Rex going on down at Legoland. Um, you know, it's been heavily rumoured that things will go into uh, Chesington next and that'll be the next investment. Again, will it happen? We're not sure. But it needs some investment. You know, Old Town is literally, it's derelict down there. It's derelict down there. You know, it's actually quite cute for the kids' rides today. And I think there is a market here for families as well. You know, there are family coasters out there the park could bring in. There are family rides, family thrill rides the park could bring in as well, which would have good enough capacity to kind of please everyone but it needs some investment. Park does need some investment. We still have a great time here because we know how to come in, get what we want done and kind of leave. And that's exactly what we've done. We've gone in, we've got the rides we want done. It's about three o'clock now. We've made great progress today. It is just about to tip it down with rain and we've had a good day and we love coming to Foot Park. And I have to say, we love the staff here, particularly mention to Nemesis Inferno. The lady on there was owning it, absolutely owning it. We were really, really impressed. But from Fort Park, this is our won't be our last vlog from here from this year because obviously we've got Friday nights and everything else coming up but this is our summer vlog in the rain from Fort Park hope you've enjoyed it remember to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time